Okay, we're going to open the meeting at 907. Uh, Jerry. Yes. On June 14th, for the Airport Authority, I acknowledge and approve the reimbursement request number seven for the FAA grant project to install the runway 11 slash 29 lighting, taxiway connector lighting, install the runway 11 slash 29 end identifier lights, install precision approach path indicator, and install beacon and lighted wind cone in the amount of $109,284.22. supposed to be 43 cents, sorry. 43 cents. Yeah. <laughs> you wrote it. I know I did. <laughs> I just went, oh, that's supposed to be 43. <laughs> $98,356 was the FAA portion, $5,464.21 was ODOT portion, and $5,464.22 was the local county match portion. Okay, Jay, that's all that. 42 cents. <laughs> okay, good. Good yeah, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Okay, so today's um, financials include an appropriations transfer to the treasurer's office to fund a contract renewal with meter public funds. Uh, there's a cash transfer from the general fund to airport construction for the grant match on the runway lighting and safety improvements project. Um, there's 166,473.52 remaining uh, on that uh, of the 503,708,000 that uh, we had um, had budgeted for that. So. There's also a cash transfer from the general fund to the sheriff's 800 communications fund to cover their first half 2019 support. Uh, there are travel requests from JFS to attend the National Adult Protective Services Association National Conference in Denver, Colorado. Travel requests from JFS to attend the annual Crimes Against Children Conference in Dallas, Texas. And a travel request from JFS to attend the National Child Advocacy Center's Forensic Interviewing of Children training in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, among the vouchers are $66,640 from the auditor's office to Wolpert Incorporated for the county flyover imagery contract mm -hmm. payment number two, and $38,278.49 from JFS to Safely Home Incorporated for May Residential Treatment Services. Um, real quick, the, um, the Wolpert contract flyover, um, I believe, I can't, I'm not 100% sure, but um, does anyone know when that contract expires? It's a three-year contract, and this is the second payment, okay. yearly payment. Is this annual. the second year? Yes. It is? Yeah, okay. so there's one more year. Okay. Then. I know there was some discussion at looking at some alternatives there. Um, this was a commitment you know, by the prior auditor, I think, that we got into a situation where, um, you know, we may have committed to some things that weren't uh, maybe the best deal there. So I know, you know, moving forward, we're going to look at some alternatives again. Is that mandatory to have that? I think what they utilize it for, the biggest thing is for finding uh, you know, new construction that wasn't necessarily followed through with the building department or with the local zoning. So that's what they, you know, it's, they, they utilize it for the GIS also, mm -hmm. but the, I think their biggest use, utilization is for determining the, uh, the new tax rates. If somebody's added on to you know, a building or building out, build, built an outbuilding that wasn't, you know, didn't follow the process and get you know, approved for the county. I think the zoning and there was something else about this where we didn't have um, the, the ownership of those images either. I think right. That was that, that was the point. issue. I think with like the contract is we don't. Yeah. yeah, we don't have the ownership of the images. And yeah. You, they're they're Wilbert's kind of more in control of when and where they do stuff than the county is. Yeah. yeah. That was a, my recollection from when when Chuck came in and was looking at that. That was one of his issues. Okay. So this time next year will be the final uh, commitment, and then I'm sure Chuck will be looking at some. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? None. Um, get a motion to approve the financials. So moved. Second. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Lake Geauga Recovery Services. We're here today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. 
we're going to do our uh, annual update. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. That went quick. That was a quick year. <laughs> yes. It yeah. Was. I know. It seems like we were just yeah. here. Yeah. But thank you very much for um, giving us the opportunity. You bet. So I um, usually this time of year we come in and go over some of our statistics and that for the last fiscal year. Um, so I'm going to. Um, well, I'm Melanie Blasco. Um, President and CEO, and this is Charles Tong, our CFO. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the um, just the statistics and outcomes for last year uh, for the jail treatment program and some of our uh, other goals uh, to follow up on our presentation from last year. So if you look at those two charts, the one at the top is really uh, for this fiscal year, which is a complete yet, and the one in the middle of the page is last fiscal year. So you can see we're serving more clients in the jail treatment program, particularly in, in the um, the groups itself, which is uh, the main uh, part of that program. Mm -hmm. um, and then the outcomes have in, increased also. Um, right now, 72% of the people that are participating in the jail treatment program um, have met their treatment plan goals, whereas last year it was 68%, so there's a little bit of an increase there. And we're, we're not, again, done with the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. As far as the aftercare group, um, serving a, a few more clients, um, so far this year, compared to last year, um, the outcomes are a little bit different for that. So the aftercare group uh, in our sharing office is specifically for those people that are coming out of the jail treatment program. So not everyone goes to that aftercare group. Some of them will go to our intensive outpatient treatment. Some of them go to residential treatment at Lake House or Oak House. <coughs> and others will go to the one that's specific for jail treatment. So those, um, those numbers reflect just those that came to the um, aftercare group in Chardon. Um, and then uh, in the third chart down there, uh, as far as the six-month follow-up, we've tracked um, the clients from jail treatment since we started that program in 1999. And they've stayed pretty consistent as far as the numbers uh, who have reported relapse, those who are sober, and numbers of re-arrest. So this um, past six months um, for last fiscal year, 70% um, were sober at the time of contact. Um, which is a which is an amazingly good number to us, so we, we feel pretty good about that. Um, and then just to uh, information as far as residential treatment, because some of these uh, folks from the jail treatment program do go to residential treatment at Oak House or Lake House. Um, Thirty-one Geauga County residents were provided residential treatment in fiscal year 18. Um, so far this year, we've had 23 from Geauga County. Um, one is currently still active. Um, in fiscal year 18, 55% of the women and 62% of the men completed residential treatment and met all their treatment milestones, which is significantly higher than the national average for those completing residential treatment. So far this year, fiscal year 19, uh, at least as of 12:31. now this uh, I would assume will change um, by the end of the fiscal year, 51% um, of women and 40% of men completed treatment and met all the treatment milestones. The other thing that we do, we track all of our residential <coughs> clients who completed treatment at six months and at one year. Mm -hmm. And so looking at those from fiscal year 17, one year after completion of treatment, 48% of men and 50% of women were still sober and reported an improved quality of life. And for those in fiscal year 18, at six months following treatment, 50%, 57% of men and 59% of women were still sober and reported an improved quality of life. Uh, and again, we, we benchmark ourselves against that national average. It's, it's sometimes difficult to find, uh, because we, we treat different clientele, so it's uh, sometimes difficult to find a, a number to benchmark yourself against. Um, isn't, um, not to interrupt, but this, isn't the, the, the relapsing you know, all part of the, mm -hmm. the process, but that in, that's included in these stats too, at six months and a year? Oh yeah, yeah. We, we, there's about eight things that we, are surveying them on, and one is um, if they've relapsed and if they have, are they back in, in services or okay. uh, involved in 12 step or some path to recovery? Okay, we ask if they're financially stable, if they have a safe, stable living environment, um, if they're employed. So, there's a series of about eight different things that we're measuring them on. I see, okay, so it's not just are they sober, right? Um, and then the last bullet point there that um, we welcome. Our 18th drug-free baby this year um, at Oak House in the Bay Ridge, 
if you recall, in the very rigid, the program specializes for pregnant women and women with children ages five and under. Um, we also accept children at Oak House. Um, but Nevada Ridge really specializes in that population. Um, the other thing, um, if you Where's that? Where's that facility open? That is in Menor. In Menor. But we do um, accept uh, people from like in Jugga County. Uh, and mm -hmm. the Jugga Board of Mental Health and Recovery Services does fund for um, two women to come to Nevada Ridge each year. So. Um, so so those are those are women that are pregnant and in and, 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 and care during your... Is that what's going on? They're pregnant. They, they have a substance use disorder diagnosis, and they're pregnant. Yeah. Some of them also have another child, so they oh. can come with their other child. They can deliver their baby and come back and finish their services. I see. Years ago, they have when they'd have their baby, they'd have to leave, and then they didn't come back. Right. So now we have uh, two facilities that will come oh, good. mom okay. with children. So the other thing we're very excited about, since we're talking about this, um, on the back, um, let's see if you go down to Roman numeral. Um, number four, and then the fourth bullet point down. Um, we had a feasibility conduct feasibility study conducted. Oh, it's been over a year ago now. Um, about having men with children at Lake House, and um, actually received some really positive feedback from uh, criminal justice, particularly in uh, with uh, fathers being awarded custody of their children. We didn't want there to be any barriers to them uh, receiving services at the level they need. So we, we made the programmatic changes that we needed, um, didn't require a lot of the physical uh, building itself. So we, we, there are no programs that we were aware of between Oregon and Florida that a child can accompany their father to treatment. So we have made that change at Lake House. Mm -hmm. We have two rooms that we've designated family rooms. And of course, these will be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and it would be children three, uh, child three or under that would, um, could accompany their father to treatment. In the company, you mean staying in the house? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, typically, the kids will go off site um, to daycare during the day. At Nevea Ridge, we have a child care worker who works on site. She takes care of the children while the um, women are receiving services. Um, so, just starting back at the top, I didn't mean to jump down, but since we were talking about um, being able to treat the whole family, I thought it was important um, about the changes at Lake House. Um, so some of the things we talked about last year, and just to update you and then our plans for uh, fiscal year 2020, um, our, we're now operating, um, gosh, it'll soon be five recovery houses. So recovery houses are for people after they've completed primary treatment. Maybe going home is not the best environment for them. So the way ours are designed, they're a level two recovery house. Um, they've all been five adults with a house manager who lives on site. Um, so Water Street was our first one, which is right here in Chardon. Uh, the Bill Horvath House is in Painswood, which is for men, and Nolan Manor, which is for women, is also in Mentor. So this past year we had all of those facilities um, certified by the Ohio Recovery Housing, um, demonstrating uh, full compliance with their quality standards um, in development and operation. Um, then in August of 2018 we opened um, 8041, which is another women's recovery house and mentor. Um, unfortunately, we are horrible at creative names for our facilities, so um, Water Street is on Water Street. <laughs> Nolan Manor is on Nolan, and 8041 just happens to be the address of that location. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> we were awarded funding from OMAS to open two more recovery houses. Uh, one will be for women in, in Geauga County. We have been so challenged by this housing market. Um, and being mindful of where we're located. So mm -hmm. it has been, we, we work, have been working so close with our realtor and it's, we've really been challenged by this. So we're still looking, we still have the grant. Um, we did finally find a place in uh, Lake County because the other grant was from then in Lake County um, and that's scheduled to open next month and that's called the Megs. And no surprise to you, it's on Megs Avenue in mm -hmm. Grand River. So. Um, we're excited about that too. Um, where, do, where does that grant come from? The Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Okay. And that's actually, those are submitted with, uh, actually through the Jugga Board of Mental Health Recovery Services. I see. Okay. Um, and mostly, uh, most of those grants have been for purchase. We had one grant was for operating. And then Roman numeral two is uh, just you know really keeping an eye on um, 
really evaluating and refining all the expansion and services that we've had, um, you know, keeping a close eye on that. Um, really expanded our medication assisted treatment program, uh, particularly for those with uh, opiate use disorder. Um, right now, um, well, it, actually a couple weeks ago anyway, um, 83 clients were participating in our medication assisted treatment program, including 19 from Geauga County. Um, so we have added uh, Suboxone to um, our medication assisted treatment services. So clients have a choice um, of two medications uh, for opiate um, withdrawal. And um, we have on Roman numeral three there, just to kind of keep up with uh, Medicaid uh, redesign and Medicaid managed care, we've added uh, quite a bit of uh, additional staff and uh, trying to increase our resources. So um, we've added um, a billing specialist, peer recovery supporter, a residential treatment super supervisor, case managers and recovery house managers. So um, this has been pretty much all in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and then moment number, number four, um, this past year we did introduce a family program and a warning intensive outpatient program in our Chardon office. Um, previously our uh, Chicago County families were traveling to um, our mental office for that group. So we were very grateful the United Way did fund that program for us this year. Um, and there's been really, really good participation in our family group as well as uh, our intensive outpatient is, is offered in the morning and the evening now. So we can accommodate those who work day shift or night shift. Um, and we, we are one of the treatment providers uh, for the Jugga County Drug Court and we'll be working with Judge Paschke for that. Um, we have become a TRICARE provider, which is insurance for military and their dependents, so um, rather than them uh, driving past Lake Geauga Center to go into Cleveland, they can now access services at, at our offices. So back up on the Geauga County Drug Court, how, how will that relationship work with you and the court then? With well, we will participate in uh, the drug court team mm -hmm. and we'll be one of the providers. Right. So will they, will you be the, um, the um, one providing the services to the court or will there be others? There'll be others. Okay. Yeah. We'll have a staff person that will be part of their treatment team. Mm -hmm. And um, then you know coordinate services with okay, the court. and then so it's not just like Jogis Hiram Ravenwood will be involved. And then the jail because you run the jail treatment program mm -hmm. too, right? So mm -hmm. will that um, affect that program in any way, or, or they just will continue on to simultaneously? Or yeah, I, I, I guess I don't understand the difference. Well, the, the, the drug the, court. Um, hopefully, they're um, participating in drug court before they go to jail treatment. So the goal is to not. Incarcerate okay. people to oh, I see. Okay. provide them services uh, and, and um, get a lot of support from uh, the court mm -hmm. uh, with um, different expectations and there's there's stages that they go through and I believe it's a two year program. Okay. So if they can avoid going to I jail, see. Very, um, very, very. that's the whole point of the drug court. Okay. And the first case is supposed to be sometime in July. Is it? I think it's great that she took that initiative because it will open up so many doors for funding when there's a drug court, um, when you have an act, a drug court that's been approved by the um, Supreme Court, then it does open up funding for other grants and that. So it's a really positive thing for Chuck. Mm -hmm. Not to mention how much help it can provide to the people who need it. Um, and then uh, the last note there, um, expansion of residential treatment for men. Um, we did receive a grant from the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Um, in, uh, so I probably, well, I'm trying to, did I, did I share this with you last year? We had, we had submitted it, but we did find out in December that we were awarded that, that grant. Um, and that is for $500,000. So that's a portion of what we need to build a new facility. The other thing that made this so sweet was that the Lake County Land Bank donated four parcels to our agency, which is, um, adjacent to um, Oak House and Lake House property. And again, even though these facilities are physically located in Lake County, we have always prioritized um, and receive our funding through um, Lake and Chugga County. So, um, so we will continue to treat um, uh, Lake and Chugga County men in, those, in this new facility. Mm -hmm. um, so we have run into a couple barriers um, with zoning and, and a number of things, but uh, last night, uh, Panther City Council did 
unanimously passed the zoning change, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. So now we go through conditional use. Unfortunately, it'll be a little while before we get a shovel in the ground, but um, we're working towards that goal. So that facility will be, right now, it's to be a 24-bed facility with four beds um, withdrawal management. So there'll be around the clock nursing staff at that facility also. And where's the location for that? Yeah, with the, yeah, right. It's adjacent to Oak House and Lake House, which is in Painesville. Got it. Had there been a land bank in Jaga County that donated us land, we would have built it out here. So we weren't partial where we built it, just the land was donated, so it made it that much more financially. Sure. Uh, but you do have the ability to, um, you could have chosen something in Jaga, though, potentially, or if you want. For a location? For this one? Yeah. We could have. Yeah. Okay. So what is the total budget that you guys operate with? The agency as a whole, you know, um, a little over $5 million a year. So five million dollars a year, and in in the uh, Jaga's portion that we contribute to you guys, the commissioners. Well, is this or all of so the commissioners do how much? Forty-four thousand uh, one fifty. And but but as far as from Jaga itself, because you're getting money from our mental health, how much do you receive from that? Correct. That that's approximately three hundred sixty. 360,000 and we served a total of hundred and well that's just the jail treatment program that's that doesn't include all of our outpatient and residential so five so 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 over five million and how many employees do you guys have um, a little over uh, 50 full-time employees and then we have approximately 20 part-time employees so about 70. So the majority of your funding comes from grants? Um, well, now we do uh, receive quite a bit of Medicaid money. Mm -hmm. That's um, probably gotten to the point where it's um, a little less than half our budget is for Medicaid. Prior to Medicaid expansion, it was maybe 12 to 15 percent of our clients were eligible for Medicaid, but with expansion, a great many more of them are eligible. So we we work pretty hard at making sure we get clients signed up for Medicaid that are eligible. Okay. So we with aren't using board dollars, we don't need to. So so with the jail program, what would you say the total hours per per client would be? Total hours. Well, um, our our person would be there. Uh, four days a week, um, so, uh, so thir 32 hours a week, up to 32 hours a week. Okay. They're in the, they're in the, pro I mean the clients themselves, they're in the program for about four weeks. And so they're receiving out, um, group therapy and individual counseling during that time. And then, then they attend the aftercare group or IOP after treatment. And then, and, and, and outside of this jail treatment program, about how many clients does Geauga County have in your programs? There was about two, between 250 and 300 a year in our outpatient office. And then um, in residential, we had 31 last year. Well, it looks like you've been very successful in your treatment program, for sure, above the above the average, mm -hmm. absolutely. And what I mean, what do you think? Um, your what would you attribute that to? Just you, you think it's just the, the people you have working with you, or the type of programs you run, or I, I have to give all the credit to our staff. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think they are just uh, relentless in their effort to try and help people get better. A lot of them have uh, walked in their shoes, a lot of them are in recovery themselves. They're all licensed, uh, most of them master's level counselors, but um, also happen to be in recovery, many of them. I see. And I think that makes, um, you know, there's there's so much, we, we do use evidence-based practices, but, um, and um, I think one of the things I always go back to, um, what I had learned that one of the most best 
indicators of a successful treatment is the relationship between the client and the counselor. Mm -hmm. I still believe that has a huge impact. Right, right. Um, so we, we are always looking at how we can improve our outcomes. So to give you an example, um, we're doing a collaboration with um, Crossroads right now in, um, to have their staff be part of our treatment team so that we are treating more of the whole family. So um, our clients who have kids that are receiving services at another agency, mm -hmm. our, our staff are going to sit on each other's treatment teams. Um, we also um, are um, going to be incorporating a fitness and wellness program in our residential programs. And these um, alternatives that help support recovery, there's a lot of documentation on how much that improves outcomes. Um, this year also we're going to be doing a lot more closer work with Cleveland Rape Crisis Center and uh, trauma-informed care. So um, we've already started the wheels rolling and are setting up some um, objectives and, and outcomes as far as what we hope to see as far as outcomes. And we'll be anxious to see how working with uh, trauma-informed care and then the fitness and wellness program if that improves our outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a, recover a good recovery program goes well beyond just staying from drugs now. Sure, yeah. And so if we can help our clients start this good foundation early on and laying this good foundation for um, some healthy living and dealing with some other trauma issues um, before they leave us mm -hmm. and then continue that work when they do leave us. Great. So always looking at how we can improve outcomes. The opiate epidemic has really um, impacted our outcomes. Uh, these, sure. We always, oh, yeah. as far as those who um, that we follow up at six months in a year, we were always at in the 70 percentile. So coming down to 50 percentile, I, I attribute that directly to the opiate epidemic. Because it's so strong to go There are some things about to treat. They, yeah. We have people that bounce out of treatment within the first couple of weeks, and we never used to have that. Mm -hmm. um, so they're sometimes a challenging population to Absolutely. treat. We've had a lot more success with getting people on medication-assisted treatment right, right away. And I think it helps reduce the um, cravings, and so they'll stay in treatment. So, so what's the percentage you think from opiate to say the other drugs or alcohol? Is it? I mean, is that the? It, right the now main? in residential, it's still pretty high, yeah. and I think that is the um, that is the recommended level of care for people with opiate use disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have plenty in outpatient, but um, I would say it's probably 60, 65 percent oh. still in residential. Mm -hmm. um, it's really dropped in our outpatient office in Jogger County and they're seeing a lot more alcohol and methamphetamine and I opiates. See. Very good. Well, thank you very much for thank you. coming in and um, uh, updating us and, um, you know, we... I think Charles yeah. had just one more thing. Sure, uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, I just, uh, as far as the jail treatment program that um, the board supports, mm -hmm. um, what we are seeking uh, would be the same funds as the year before, um, 44150 This um, uh, pays for um, our counselor uh, four days a week, mm -hmm. their, their cost for salary. And I see. I, I, you know, not to, uh, I, I guess going back to my original question, will the drug treatment program affect the jail program? Because will the, theoretically, there should be less maybe coming to the jail, correct? Drug court, you mean? I mean the drug court, I'm yeah, sorry. I, yeah. We aren't anticipating that. They so won't change the numbers? More of our referrals from the uh, jail treatment come from the uh, Chardonnay Unity. Oh, okay. Then from Common Pleas. I see. In fact, that maybe is on this sheet here. Um, we used to provide that. So they won't, okay. So Chardonnay Muni doesn't have a drug court, obviously, so that no. won't change. But so the, the Common Pleas will only be drug offenders with felonies or, or I mean I guess is that right felonies yeah. yeah okay okay so it won't affect your program at all that's what I'm asking the drug court I, I don't believe it will no like I said I, I um, most of our referrals come from the okay. treatment program okay and so um, so the 44,000 helps pay for the Caregiver, yeah, that's yeah, the seven. Okay, counselors. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. So let me ask you. So, so on that, with the with the uh, drug court, would it? I mean, if, if 
so to get to the felony level, it's either a situation where there's been multiple offenses, right, or something to a more serious level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so do so do you think that the drug court would, you know, benefit on a on a municipal side so that. I mean, if, if somebody's done it so many times, has he had so many problems to get to that level, the, the you know, common pleas side of it, could it have been more effective if it was in an earlier time? With the drug court. Right. Yeah. Through immunity. Well, I think that's some of these things I think are yet to be determined. So, Because um, I'm kind of confused, and I mean, and to be honest with you, I, I didn't, Tim's got a great question there, hmm. because it's it's a situation where if, if we're if we're if we've got a big expense with the drug court and we've got a and we're not going to see a reduction so where does the reduction then come in well i, I would assume not not everybody that goes to jail goes to the jail treatment program so if there are fewer people incarcerated but, but, as a result of the drug court but the drug court is directly related to you know chemical substance mm -hmm. abuse so we should see a reduction. In the jail treatment program of people attending? I would think so, right? Like I said, I don't know that everybody who has an offense related to drugs and alcohol is necessarily referred or has an interest in participating in the jail treatment program. So I'm sure there's people in the jail who have a substance use disorder that are not in our jail treatment program. I mean, what is the pop? I don't know what the population is of the jail, but mm -hmm. if you look at how many we serve in a whole year, no, no, I'm I'm not arguing with you. I'm just I, I think that Tim's got a great point. Um, you you know, think that the numbers in jail treatment will? Or you would hope that well, drug court would be to basically not put you in jail, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're not in jail, you're not doing a jail program. You're, you're somebody is not going through a jail treatment program, so our numbers should go down. That's, I mean that's that's what I thought the. The point of it was, I mean, it says that you're going to be a treatment provider for the drug county drug court, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought that would maybe reduce our numbers, the numbers in jail to going through treatment. No, well, they don't I correlate guess I'm at all. At it no, no. Oh, I, I don't, okay. I'm looking at it differently because like I guess I, said, I don't understand any so of this. So if, stuff. if, um, if people in, uh, that are referred, that are in drug court, well, the whole jail population are not all coming to jail treatment. So maybe it's some people that would have been sent to jail but are now going to participate in drug court. Maybe they're not necessarily the same population that are in the jail treatment program. Do you know what I mean? Like if there's a population in the jail of 200 mm -hmm. and 180 of them are have a uh, substance use disorder, maybe only 50 of them come to the jail treatment program. So she, the drug court might be, um, not preventing, could be a, um, an alternative to incarcerating those folks. So not all of them would be part of the jail treatment program. Okay. I guess do you limit the jail treatment program? Because I still don't understand the, 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 the numbers don't jive because if you've got a bigger pool of people that, you know, are going to this, if, you're, if we're reducing the numbers of people in jail, then the numbers in a program should be reduced, unless there's a cap that you guys are only doing 158 people, and that's it. I mean, I, I just if if there's less people in jail, there should be less people in this program. Right. I mean, that's my that's my thought would be that's the whole point of drug court to keep. Right. So that's, is there a way to track this in the future then? Well, absolutely. I mean, if our numbers go down, we're, we're always we're obviously we're gonna be looking at that. So um, we're not anticipating that the, that the jail treatment program will have any less people because of the drug court. I think there'll be less people in jail, hopefully, but that doesn't necessarily mean less people in the jail treatment program. And I, I think she was capping it at, um, was it 40 people for the, in a year? Okay. Something like that. Yeah. I think yeah. she she has a cap in her, in her program. But I think the biggest thing is it depends on where the you know where the people who are going into jail into the jail treatment program are coming from. Because mm -hmm. if they're coming from the muni court, the drug court's not going to have any any impact on changing how many people are coming into the jail from the muni court. I see. 
Whereas if, they, you know, if, if it was a majority of your clientele that are in there, that are coming from the, the common plea, then yes, the yeah, general court would have a direct But some direct are coalition. coming from common so pleas. There, yeah, there probably will be some. So yeah. those numbers what the, what theoretically the, should be less. Theoretically, unless now you can actually treat more who weren't being treated before. Because I don't know what, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm just making an assumption would be that you're limited on how many you can actually treat with only having one person in the jail for 32 hours a week. We have two counselors uh, when you do a two, male, okay. men's group and a women's group, but they are closed groups, so they mm. kind of go through, and then when that uh, however long 12 weeks is done, then another group comes through. Okay. And we can't exceed, because we're licensed by the High Departmental and Addiction Services, we can't exceed one counselor for 12 people. So we have those limitations. Oh, okay. So do you have a drug court in, in Lake County? Mm -hmm. In, on the muni municipal side or the common pleas? Municipal. It started with uh, Judge Trevitz at Mentor, at Mentor Municipal. Now it's called the Lake County Drug Court because he serves all of Lake County. That seems, to me, that seems to make you know, not more sense, but it seems to be that's kind of where the, um, the action is or the rubber meets the road kind of, you know. And first, of, you know, like yeah. really the first offense, um, you know, visits for... Mm -hmm. And they have real specific stipulations as to who they will and will not take at the Mentor Drug Court. And I don't know off the top of my head what Judge Patchkey's, who their eligibility is for I that see. program. So is the um, jail treatment program, is that voluntary? Mm -hmm. It is? Yeah. Okay. So, the, so a judge. I think the, I think judge. Uh, now I take that back because I'm sure Judge Topeka uh, makes that part of their sentence. Oh, she, okay. I would imagine. Okay. I'd have to check on that to okay. kind of say something on that issue. Sure. Okay. But I, I think there's we get a fair amount who are in jail who also uh, send a make, you know request it through our counselors to participate in the program. I see. So not everybody is ordered there through the court. Okay. So are you involved in the in the municipal um, drug court? process also? In Mentor? Mm -hmm. We actually started it with Judge Trevitz in 2010. And, and, and what kind of results have you seen? Well, like I said, he <laughs> initially um, he um, took people who um, were low risk and um, so we were, I, we were missing a whole lot of people who could have benefited from that program. So initially I, I think it's been a learning process. Um, so we have a specific program now, um, well we always did, but it, um, uh, we have a, some of our staff participate on his treatment team. And then we have what our, our uh, opiate recovery program, which a lot of his folks would come to. So I, I don't know what his statistics are, I could certainly find out and, and email you and let mm -hmm. you know um, what their outcomes are, because we aren't the only treatment provider for the drug court, just like this drug court, sure. the others who are involved. So, in Lake County, it would also include Signature Health um, and Beacon Health. But I can I can get that information. Let you know what their outcomes are. I think one of the questions though, that maybe Commissioner is, is looking for is: Have you seen a reduction in your your um, prison or your jail program as a result of the Muni Court being? Well, we don't operate the jail program, unfortunately, okay. in Lake County. Oh, that's, a, that's what I was, th I don't know whether that's what you were yeah, looking for, but that seemed yeah. to be but I, I where you were I could heading. ask, I mean, I have a good relationship with the people in Lake County, so I could ask if, if um, the drug court impacted the jail population there. I mean, they've been at it for nine years now, so mm -hmm. um, I can I can try and get that information. Yeah. And mean, what is their cap? Um, I believe his is 40, Judge Travis. And maybe that's why I'm being confused. When you said 25, I do think Judge Patchy said it was 25 or 26 initially. Okay. I mean, but Judge Travis is 40. I don't think he ever has 40. No. Okay. Great. I appreciate the information. Yeah, thank you so much for your update. And, and, uh, and as to your uh, question and request, um, you know, I'm comfortable in continuing that. Okay. And, um, you know, I don't know if the other commissioners yeah. approve with that as well. Um, and, you know, if you ever need to uh, talk about it any further, you know, we're always available. Yep. Yeah. Great. So I'll get back with you with two things. The outcomes for the Mentor Drug Court from, from the judge and then um, 
also on top of the jail and see if their population has declined yeah. since they started drug court. I mean, I would, okay. not to get too confusing, but I would think that's the whole point of the drug court is to lessen the population, and that, in theory, I think would lower your numbers, and, but maybe. maybe I'm not. And do you have a drug court on the common police side in Lee County also? No. Is it you can have one or the other, or is it? That I'm not sure about, but okay. I, I, I think because uh, the municipal court handles most of them, um, and again, they were dealing most with low-level offenders when they started that program. Okay. So there, there will be two different populations that are compared to Jack. All right. Sure. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. For your hard work. Okay, moving forward, uh, agenda item number four, County Engineer's Office, Nick. Good morning, Nick. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, the item on the agenda this morning is to a request to establish the drainage maintenance district for the McFarland Woods subdivision phase two to approve the um, plans. Um, previous meeting this is just that next phase so that we can start to collect you know replacement funds for stormwater facilities very good the motion please so move second Mr. DeVore yes Hi. Hi. thank you thank you I know have a good day appreciate it okay <clears throat> five board of mental health recovery services oh. how are you Jim good morning good 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 good, good, good. Everybody pretty right. good still kicking yes I think you got round two of our request uh, to put the seven tenths renewal on the ballot for November mm -hmm. um, you had all my I think we sent all the initial information the first time I sat with you mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's other questions or issues um, you, you know just going back to our previous conversation yes would, would you have any insight on that yes okay good I know I saw you I saw you out there biting your lip but I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, one thing that didn't come up in that conversation was uh, about penetration rates so there is a certain amount of individuals that we are serving every year and that Melanie and her agency serves and that Ravenwood serves and family pride serves but it's a very small portion of the of the total pie of people that are using. Right. And so when you talk about penetration rates, the idea is to increase the number of people that actually come in for treatment. So what you might see is a reduction in the number of people in jail uh, because of them going through this process. But the other thing you might see is more people engaging in treatment in the jail process. So, uh, what Melanie was referring to a lot of times was, you know, just because they're there doesn't mean people take advantage of it. And so part of the re reason the drug courts become more effective is because they got that clout mm -hmm. that, you know, just coming to treatment doesn't have because they can put you in prison, uh, which, you know, Muni can't, I understand, you know, yeah. I don't know, I don't know words, but, you know, uh, which common kind of pleas can. Okay. And so I think what, you know, what the goal is, you know, less deaths, mm -hmm. higher rates of treatment, uh, higher rates of recovery. Uh, it won't, uh, it doesn't translate directly immediately to the number of people you see, but over time it should. And the other thing that you would expect to see then is lower crime rates, lower time with probation, you know, uh, costs for probation officers, court costs, all those mm -hmm. kinds of uh, societal things become a, uh, written into that cost. And it's a long-term health issue. It's just like anything else. If it was, you know, if it was heart disease or if it was, um, you know, diabetes or something like that so it, it is a long term and, and even for that you talk about penetration rates how many people that actually have you know diabetes are actually getting treatment for it and what is the cost then uh, of that treatment versus the cost of the overall health benefits over time I see okay that was uh, simple wasn't it yeah yeah no, yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's good uh, yeah but um, okay so uh, let's if we could get a motion on five, please. I so move. Second. All in favor? Sorry, guys. No. I don't know if you're doing it. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay. Thanks, all. Okay. And then number six. Six. Yeah. 
sorry, five is the right. acknowledgement of the certificate of the estimated property. Okay, thanks, Jim. And then well, six is actually the resolution. So, so move on six. Second. Yes. Yes. So the planning commission. Yeah, the next two items I've, I've got covered. The, these deal with the uh, Pope Home site, the stream mitigation credits that under the new rules we're no longer allowed to uh, to sell. So these are this is just uh, refunding to two developers their initial deposit for the mitigation. Um, okay. Good. Uh, Motion for that. So moved. Second. Commissioner Brewer? Yes. Commissioner Brewer? Yes. Okay. Um, same thing. So seven, eight. Yes. Nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah. So you're okay. number nine, which is J. Okay. J. Morning, Craig. Hey, guys. Um, Morning, Craig. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, Craig. Pretty good. 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 So um, this is the subgrant agreement that we receive from Ohio Department of Job and Family Services every two years, which comes through with your signature and allows us to receive the federal funds because they get filtered through um, the state down to the counties. And so this is a subgrant agreement which you guys. Uh, approve to allow those funds to come to my agency to administer the federal side programs. Okay. Um, if we could get a reading on that, real quick. The Department of Job and Family Services is requesting to work through and execute your House Department of Job and Family Services sub grant agreement upon the recommendation of the Executive Director establishing the terms, conditions, and requirements governing. The administration and use of federal funds by John Prime Job and Family Services for the period July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2021. Motion, please. So move. Second. Commissioner DeBoer? Yes. Commissioner Spillard? Aye. Yes. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thanks a lot. It's a great today. 18. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Okay. Well, Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. I'm Kathleen. Hi. I'm special okay. There. Yeah. Met all of yeah. I don't think we've met yet. Steve's yeah. In DC, Tim so. Lennon. Okay. Yeah. yeah nice okay. to meet you. Good. Thank you very much for coming in. Um. So, if you just want to, um, just, uh, I guess, just describe. Describe it. So yep. the first one is the. the um, <clears throat> we're seeking the approval to execute uh, the revision of the Munson Township 208. Yep. Water quality management plan um, to include the Legend Lakes golf course parcel that may be sewered um, and um, also the alignment of some um, FPA prescription areas with parcel boundaries. Okay, if we could get a reading on that. The Department of Water Resources is requesting the order to execute the revised Munson Township 208 water quality management plan to reflect the alignment of facility planning area, prescription areas with parcel boundaries, and include the Legend Lakes. Golf Club LLC parcels, permanent parcel number 21-000900, 21 21-001500, 21 and 21-070900 Motion. So moved. Second. Commissioner DeBar? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Okay, and number 11. Okay, the next one, uh, we are requesting the board to approve and execute contract maintenance form number one, increasing the contract with Workman Industrial Services incorporated for the replacement of a portion of a wall that is crumbling and the installation of two doors, two steel doors um, at McFarland that are uh, rotting. Uh, they'll be replaced with uh, aluminum do doors. Um, any amount of 36,000. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Commissioner DeWard? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Okay, number 12. Okay, we are um, requesting the board approve the creation, title, and job description uh, for the position of administrative assistant to be effective June 18, 2019. Um, and this was added to the organizational chart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, that's just advertising for the and then, okay. and then the commission to advertise for it. Same. Okay, motion on 12 and 13. So moved. 
Second. Commissioner Dwyer? Yes. Lynch? Aye. Commissioner Lynch? Yes. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Appreciate it. Okay, number 14. This is the uh, Chardon's annexation. Are you, uh, are you here about the annexation? I'm just here to observe. Oh, good. Okay. Very good. How are you, Jeff? Good. Okay. Uh, so, the Commissioner's Office requesting the Board acknowledge receipt of a petition for annexation of High Rise Code 709.16 from the City of Chardon, June 11, 2019, for the annexation of parcel number 15-096650. Located at 12499 Chardon Windsor Road in Hamden Township into the city of Chardon, noting that Randall B. Sharp, city manager, is appointed as agent for the petitioners. Okay, and included in this petition is a legal description. Um, this is the plan map if you guys were interested in seeing where it is. That it is I mean, this is, this is property owned by the city. Yes. Yeah. And per their charter, it had to go to the voters to approve the annexation of that parcel, and that was completed in November of last year, I believe. Okay. Jeff, do you have any idea what they're doing with this property? It would be part of Mel Harder Park. Gotcha. Currently, okay. you'll see that there is a parcel that is surrounding, the, there is a property surrounding the parcel that they are annexing, but it is, is yes. But if you look around it, there is a parcel owned by um, another individual that goes all the way around that one acre. Um, but that parcel is contiguous to the center line of the road to the property that the city owns on the other side of the street, okay. which is the residence of Chardon. So this dwelling, do they have access or easement still? Um, my understanding is that dwelling has been removed. Oh, it has. So it's not, nobody's living in it. It's not a home or, or yeah, okay. It's gone. Okay. So the property that surrounds this property that's going to be annexed is still going to be in the township. In the Hamden Hamden. Correct. Mm -hmm. that's there has been discussion about um, maintenance of the road um, with snow and ice removal, and my understanding is that it's if Chardon gets to it first, they do it. If the county gets to it first, they do it, and it's kind of a back and forth. Okay. On it, but it is taken care of. And both parties are um, in favor of this. I mean, no, as in, I mean, if there's no opposition to this. No, Hamden Township was notified of what we were okay. doing. We have, to my knowledge, have not heard anything from them opposing. Okay. 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 Um, so if we could get a motion on number 14. So move. Second. Mr. work? Yes. Mr. Miller. Okay. Miller. Yes. Number 15 is just to um, ask you to acknowledge that um, upon receiving the petition that I forwarded to the prosecutor's office and the county engineer's office for review, and then 16 is that upon receipt of that, that um, the county engineer's office then did send a letter um, stating that they have received, reviewed, and approved the plan and legal description um, for the territory to be annexed to the city of Sherman. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Yes. Yes. Under the section of the code for this petition, um, the board has 30 days to review um, and make a decision. There is, um, because it is contiguous, it's pretty much we would have to grant the petition. Yep. So a resolution is being prepared for you and this is to be looking at as July 2nd for the agenda. Great. Number 16. We just did it. Yep, ocean. We're done. We did 15 and 16. Okay. Together. Gotcha. Okay. And then 17. Okay, so this is about so the, uh, this the holiday. Yeah, the July 5th, the day after the 4th of July. It's the Friday. So there's a request as well as the offices could be closed on that Friday. So that was the request for the language that would be in there is that basically the uh, Employees would be paid up to eight hours, depending upon what their normal schedule is for working on Fridays, um, and then that that pay would be out of active pay status, so it would not count towards any overtime. I see. But the, the, anybody who did have to work that day would get paid overtime. And, and the rest of the day. the offices in the county are closed. The only other elected official who is not closed is uh, Joe Patel, and he's kind of waiting to see what happens with this board. Yeah. And, and what's the um, 
normal course of action in the past when it fall, falls on this? In the past, the kind of tradition has been that if the holidays fall on a like the Thursday, the Thursday or a, or a Tuesday, yeah. that can that extra day in between is, has been given off to the employee. Okay. Uh, and what are, what do you have you heard from what other counties do? I mean, do they, it, it's I mean, hit and miss okay. depending upon what county you talk to. Some of them are some yeah. of them are closing, some of them are staying open. But as far as any essential services, those still be the, yeah, available. essential twenty four hour services okay. are still available. Okay. Um, okay. So, if you want to um, make a motion for the commissioner's office to close the county offices on July fifth, two thousand nineteen. So moved. Second. Motion for it. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. And then, um, just of note. Um, Department of Aging is having their annual volunteer appreciation lunch tomorrow. Um, if anybody's attending, uh, I'll, be there. I'll be there. The WACA yeah. air quality. And Kelly. Oh, so Kelly's okay. gone? Okay, good. Um, and then we'll be closed on July 4th, obviously, and the 5th. Any other comments or questions? Um, I did get a call. I, I don't, I haven't, uh, wasn't able to, to lock a time to meet with, but I think uh, Paul Newman had called me from the library board. Yeah. And so I think that they want us to try to move forward to, you know, I didn't really talk to them in full detail, but I think that they're short on board members. Yes. Yeah. Or is it just one or multiple or? At the library, it's just one. It's so just one. he did contact me too, and um, he's actually wanted to come talk to me today about it okay um, and uh, so he's gonna be here around 1030 I don't know if you want to meet with him okay and I just I explained to him you know, I appreciate the you know they they did go out and advertised another round to see if they could find any other but anybody else interested in that board position they came back and said that they found none so that you know these are seven-year terms that this fellow Gordon Burgess has been on this will be going on its third term of, of three contiguous seven-year oh. terms. I'd like to see, you know, start introducing maybe some new yeah. ideas, new blood in there. And, you know, that's agree. just a long time. To, so I, I don't know if we want to go maybe advertise ourselves or the three of us individually can start. No, I agree, and I, I just think that, yeah. um, that some of the some of the uh, process during that uh, during that the library. Um, you know, levy the that they passed, and and the the you know just the inability of ask of answering questions that we were asking them, and the inconsistencies of you know just the I don't knows um, concerns me, and I think that um, I think that that's a reflection on leadership possibly. So, well, I, I I agree. I think that there needs to be maybe a um, fresh set of eyes. You know, and I think. You know, when we're appointing not just the library board seats, but you know any of the board seats we appoint, you know, it should reflect on, you know, the values and ideals of what this board is thinking. You know, right? If, we, if it's a conservative matter, I think we should be thinking of conservative individuals. Sure. You know, so um, you know, it's hard to, and I appreciate people that volunteer their time and efforts, and I know it's not easy to get people dedicated to. Actually, putting their nose to the grind on some of these things, but you know, I think we owe it to everybody and the taxpayers to find individuals that will be willing to do that. You know, yeah. so if, I know it takes effort from us to go out and try and kind of uh, explain what the positions are, and then to get you know valuable people to put their time in. You know, so I I agree. I I think. We don't have to rush into that decision anytime soon. I, I'm happy to meet with the, uh, the president, the current president of the library board, to discuss. You know, I'm sure his thoughts are to continue on with this individual, and, and I'm sure he's done a, a lot of work for the library board. But seven-year terms just are a long time, and I think we should, you know, take totally. a hard look at who we put in there. So I, I think maybe for this week, um, again, maybe we pass on making any appointments but I you know I'm happy to start 
you know, reaching out in the community and trying to find somebody to volunteer to do that. Yeah. Jim, I don't know if you have any thoughts or anybody that you would be interested Sometimes in. Sometimes a fresh eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh look. Yeah. 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 I know there, there's a big project going on there right now where they're, you know, underway and spending a, a ton of money, tax money right now. So, you know, having somebody in there that yeah. uh, reports back to at least this board would be nice, you know, on what's going on there, you know. Okay. So the applicants apply and just send it to Chrissy or what? Yeah, this office. Jerry now will come. We'll come up with a notice to, to get out as a possibility to yeah. I mean, do you want to do that as a board to apply for? I mean, we had the we had asked the library to go out yep. and advertise. Mm -hmm. They said that they got no response. I didn't see the advertisements anywhere, but they said they did, and I think maybe we should do our own to sure. see if there's anybody what that would. We can, just, we can do that. Okay. Okay. I would, I would also encourage the three of you if you know somebody. Yeah. To bring them. Yeah. And even tell, tell anybody. Them that, tell them yeah. the application. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. Totally. Okay. Um, so do we need a motion to advertise that or not? Um, we should go ahead and do that just to, okay. be, just to keep it orderly. Okay. And then the only other thing was... Uh, so what other appointments do we have to, to make? We have mental health that's coming up that is due at the end of the month here. Um, we have three, um, Mr. Welty, Ms. Shumway, okay. and three. Cassini are all expiring at and, the end of June. And then the other thing that um, we need to look into. Look the um, advertisement's been on the um, main yeah. page of the website and on our, our content page. Is we the have attendance. One, we have two applications. For mental health, mm -hmm. and then the other thing we need to look at is I, I just I think that we we need to be accountable of what the rules are um, for the attendance. Also, um, we need to we need to request you know do a formal request to mental health. She does send them we to do, me. Yeah, yeah she we get does it. Send them to us regularly. I, I have been keeping track. I, I have been keeping uh, track of those as they've been coming. But is there a, is there a cutoff when it says like? They're not I believe you know, it's, They're not showing I, up. I think it's something. three meetings. I program. think it's three. Yeah. The only thing is that it's unexcused absences. Okay. So the, you'll see ones on they'll there that they're they're excused. they're excused. Okay. So they, under their rules, that that would not count. So what is the what, what is how, their criteria of excused and unexcused? I don't know what, the, what their what their specific requirement were. criteria is. And, and, yeah. and we keep track of the state appointees too. Yeah, it's a it, it's the, the, they send us as a full documentation of every, of all the board members okay. what their absences are. So, I, th I believe we appoint how, how many are on the health board? We we appoint what like five I think or, or is it? I, it's not in front of me, so I don't have my yeah. book with me. But it's, it's a big board wanna, though. Yeah, I want to say it eleven. I want to say it's it is eleven. A large amount. Yeah, yeah. And but they're on a rotation. Five. Yeah. yeah. So that they don't all come due at the same time. Yeah. Very good. Okay. I don't know. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. You need anything? No. Looks like a public meeting to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say if you need anything. We're just getting ready to close. So. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. We're just about ready to adjourn. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. No further comment. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah. Very good. Here's your support of somebody else for sure.